Hi everybody, I'm just some guy and today I'm going to review Nam Wolf, aka an American werewolf in Vietnam. Oh man, this series is so awesome. I got it a couple of weeks ago, read it, and then read it again. Something about it seemed familiar. I'm like, I know this book. A couple of days ago I was cleaning my desk off and I found this business card with the first issue's cover on it. At first I thought that was why it was so familiar, but then I thought, you know what, let me check my comic books. So I did, and it turns out I already bought the first issue of C2E2 this year. I even had it signed by the creators. So I bought it twice. That's what happens when you spend $600 at a con. You forget what you bought. Well, I don't mind having two copies of the first issue because this book is badass. It's written by Fabian Rangel Jr., drawn by Logan Faber, and colored by Brennan Wagner. Normally I don't mention the colorist, but the coloring in this book deserves the attention. Wagner nails the lighting and the mood. I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a background in animation. If you look at the pages from a distance, they read like color guides for a film. I really like Wagner's use of red in some scenes, like the flashback scenes. It's probably the brightest color in the book, mostly used for blood or for the sky before something really bad happens. I love that kind of color play. Logan Farber's art looks quirky and a little cartoonish and you'd think it'd work against this kind of story. The story is pretty serious and it's set in Vietnam, but his style actually works well for the book. It has this kind of pulp horror comic quality to it that easily fits in the concept of the story, especially scenes like where the werewolf salutes his team. Farber's style lets him go from funny to serious. The torture scenes are a great example of that. They still read as a serious and horrific event, even though the art style is a little cartoonish. His panel layout and pacing are solid. You don't get lost on the page and he knows how to build tension to keep your eye flowing. His character designs are awesome, especially the monsters. I'm glad that he didn't go for the typical werewolf and vampire looks. The designs are obvious enough that you know what the monsters are, but different enough to be original. That's refreshing because we've all seen more than enough werewolves and vampires that look like every other one you've ever seen. Now for the story, Baby and Rangel Jr. does something pretty cool. He takes the Vietnam War and asks a simple question. What if one of the boys drafted into the war was a werewolf? How has no one done this before? And if they did, how did I miss it? It's such an awesome concept. And Rangel handles it with the tongue-in-cheek Robert Rodriguez grit that it deserves. Seriously, if there's a movie, get Rodriguez to direct it. It would be awesome. The story follows 18-year-old Marty Spencer just after he gets drafted to Vietnam. On his first night in Nam, he turns into a werewolf. He's got no idea what's happening to him. His screams lead the Viet Cong right to him. And he turns into a werewolf as they're dragging him away and he slaughters all of them. One of the guys in his unit, Killer Joe, doesn't like that. He doesn't want a monster doing his job, so he tries to kill Marty. That doesn't work, but it does kind of snap Marty back to his senses. He runs off and gets found in the morning by his unit who take him in. Right before Marty left home, his dad gave him a letter and told his son that he'd know when to read it. So while Marty's sitting behind bars, he opens the letter and finds out that his family is the werewolf version of Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. His family's been fighting wars since they wore kilts. Jesus Christ, this book is so good it makes me want to slap my mama. So of course, when the military catches wind of Marty's powers, they capture him, brainwash him, and use him as a weapon. Now I don't want to give away the whole story, but let's just say that Killer Joe kind of earns his name, and there's a big monster battle at the end of the book. Wrangle does a great job of pacing. Like I said, I read the series twice, in one day. The pacing is that good. It's a quick read. There's not a lot of dialogue, but there's tons of visual storytelling. You could follow the book with just the pictures, and that's a great sign. Because the series is so short, you don't get a lot of meat to any of the characters. Most of the character development you get is with Marty, but even that's kind of sparse. That actually works for the story though, because it's more about the concept than the characters. As long as you understand the main character's motivation, and you do, it's good enough. Nam Wolf is a great example of how to write a short story in comic form. You see just how much you can put in and leave out and still make the story work. It's also a good example of playing on archetypes. Wrangle uses tried and true archetypes that we all know, the unsure kid, the tough but caring leader, the gruff killer. These are archetypes that immediately tell us how someone is going to act. Just for example, you already know what type of person Marty could become by the end of the story. He's either going to run away, become a gruff badass, or turn on the people who tortured him. That's usually what the unsure kid does when he gets powers. You already know what Killer Joe will do to Marty. You probably already guess what he'll do to himself to be able to get at Marty. This is why Rangel can get away with so little character development. We already know how these types of characters should act, so all Wrangle needs to do is tell us their motivation in the context of the story, and we're good to go. Another reason Nam Wolf works so well is that Wrangle kept it simple. 
he doesn't do a lot of world building. Most people are familiar with Vietnam, so he doesn't really need to explain that. You don't really need a lot of info about how werewolves work in his world because Marty's basically born with the power. Everything else happens within the story, so whatever you need is right there. By keeping the story and plot simple, Rangel could focus on great pacing and cool action. You can see spots where he could expand or continue the story if he wanted, but he didn't have to. That's just awesome writing. This is an absolutely fun read. I can't wait to see what else Rangel comes up with. Seriously, you need this book in your life. Go buy the four issues right now. If you can't find them, there's actually a trade coming out in November, so you might want to wait to pick that up. Definitely get this book, though. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for listening, folks.